Hello, 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 hello. Oh, I said good morning then. That's just out of force of habit. It might not be morning. It's morning when I'm recording this, but it might not be morning when you're watching it. So, hi. Because of any course you take into the whole global thing, and you could be watching it anywhere in the world, which means you might as well say good morning because there's a good chance of it being morning is not. Anyway, whatever. Hi. Uh, it's my um, Ask Boss Anything on my YouTube channel. So, make sure you subscribe and make sure you uh, like this. <laughs> if you do, don't know what makes me laugh. <laughs> But it does. And of course, this is uh, Ask Martin Monday, hashtag Ask Martin Monday on my Twitter. At TV Martin Roberts is your chance to ask me questions about anything. Uh, which is why we call it Ask Martin Anything. <laughs> We've really thought that through. But the largely property, uh, but it doesn't have to be. As indeed, the first question today is from Roy Pavitt. Hello, Roy. How are you? Hi, Martin. Your IMDb page shows that you have appeared on many shows. But this means that I've sort of made it. Well, not really, but it sort of means something. IMDB, I think it's it's like a database of people who are in the TV and film industry. I have read an interesting story about the guy who set it up, actually. It was just like some Hollywood fan, and he set up this sort of like fan page, which just lists information about different people in, in, in the industry and what they do. And um, it's turned into like this, the, the, the go-to place for information about people who are in the industry. Yeah, so it lists, every, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how you get on it. I didn't put myself on it, somebody did. Uh, but it's got lists of the things I've done. And so it's, um, it's anyway, where I look. Your IMD page, blah, 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 shows you've appeared on many shows. Indeed, what one show has been the most fun to be part of, not including Holmes and the Hammer? Well, I would have to say doing Wish You Were Here, which is the travel show, uh, which I did for eight or so years with Judith Chalmers and the team, was probably a really good gig because I got to travel the world. It was all a bit fast. Uh, you know, you, got to, you don't exactly go on holiday to these places. I once did uh, Vancouver for 24 hours. I mean, imagine it's like, it's a long time on a plane to get there and a long time on a plane to get back. I mean, you know, nobody would ever give you any sort of... Uh, um, sympathy for jet lag but you know yeah it was uh whatever so you don't really uh, it's not like going on holiday with the family but it was still amazing to be part of a show that took you all around the world and i got to see some amazing things and uh, i don't know if they're available i must dig them out and see if you if you go on uh youtube if you can find any old uh wish you were here's with me on them i don't know have a look uh second part of the question how much is this gourd <laughs> a shackle 30 denarii <laughs> real life story it's another uh, Holy Grail. No, not Holy Grail. Uh, Life of Brian Link. And if you could pay them to goods, which character would you be? I would be Scott. I like the fact that he goes there first. He susses out the problems. And uh, he drives a really cool... Well, they're all really cool, are they? All a really cool rocket. Gareth Evans. Ah, I missed you again. How about Try Again Tuesday? I like that. How long did the big bone last? Well, if you remember, I gave a ridiculously sized bone to my dog. And it's still in the garden. I mean, it is enormous. Um, I mean, they, you know, they, usually, they pick at it, don't they? They get off the nice bits and they left this massive, great dinosaur bone. So it's still there, mate. If you could present anything other than Holmes and Hammer, what would it be? Yeah, interesting. I'd love to do a chat show because, so I'd like to do Graham Norton or something like that because I just think, you know, I don't know. I'd really like to talk to people. I'm quite good at getting their stories out of them. So, yes, I would like to do a chat show and I would just like to do Strictly. So let's see that. Put that out there. The world matching. It's me again. Bye. You're always welcome back, mate. Thanks for answering my last question about your coat buttons. Right. For today's question, may I ask, what wax or product do you use in your hair? I love how it's held in place, but non-greasy, and you have a lovely hairline. Well, <laughs> very nice set of compliments there. Thank you. I don't really. Oh, my hair's falling out. This happens when you get old. So I fudge it and try and make it look all right. I use something called American Crew Forming Cream, which is I find quite good. But I've also got this like thinny bit, which is driving me insane at the top there. So I've started using this stuff you sort of like powdery and flaking if I'm doing stuff to try and cover it up. Oh, God. Anyway, la da what can you do? <clears throat> Naomi B. Oh, hello, Naomi. Hi, Martin. From a diehard Holmes and the Hammer fan. Good girl. Would you consider buying a flat at the moment with all the issues around cladding and construction? Well, it's not really... Uh, yeah, it's a terrible situation. There are flats, obviously, which you don't have any kind of indication that they, they, they don't have any cladding for a start, like just a flat in an old Victorian house or something like that, in which case it's just... It, it's not it's not flats per se that are a problem or being a problem. It's specifically the, the high-rise ones, well, above six, six storeys, I believe, which have got a specifically sort of some kind of cladding on the outside, which is all put there for good reasons in the first place, but this doesn't actually check out what they put on. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Hopefully that's that situation is getting slightly better. Uh, at least it's been recognised as a terrible situation. Mart Smith. Hey, Mart. Appreciate it's probably a whatever you're comfortable with answer. Upside down, but what does that emoji mean? That upside down emoji. What does, is that kind of like, I don't know. Is it, I like the googly eyeballs a little bit, but what? 
Yeah. For a long-term buy-to-let, anyway, whatever. For a long-term buy-to-let property, would you mortgage via interest-only or capital repayment? I'm swaying towards interest-only due to the low rates. Hmm. As you say, I'm not a financial advisor. <clears throat> Your best bet is to go to uh, as an independent mortgage broker and weigh it up. Now, realistically, um, long-term buy-to-let means you're in it for the long term. The thing about 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 uh, capital repayment is they are more expensive but it does mean at the end of the 20 years you don't owe any money anymore you paid it off over the time which actually is quite a good thing interest only you are left with a big debt at the end and you've only been borrowing the interest so it's short term sensible but long term not so much so that's it in a nutshell it really depends on your circumstances what you can afford and what you plan to do with the property in a nutshell hi martin gemstar seven hello hi uh, you've done a few homes and homes in starbridge and i was wondering if on your travels you met a very important cat who works at starbridge junction train station not sure i met the cat obviously it's a local feature uh, a local feline feature uh, no, I didn't have the pleasure. Uh, I shall take it out the next time I'm there. Scott. Sarah Scott Johnson. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Martin. Hi. Mum is aged 82 and has come to live with us. Is it better to extend and build down the downstairs wash facility and bedroom lounge space or move to something more suitable? Wow. Okay. So, I guess... It depends on your money situation. I and mean, if you can afford, maybe have somewhere with a granny annex, that's always really nice, isn't it? Um, it gives your mum a sense of slight independence, but she's within easy reach. You can build something, perhaps if you've got space, more than a wash facility, you could you could build, you know, an ensuite, maybe ensuite bedroom with double doors out onto the garden, which would, I think, be really quite nice uh, as an option. Uh, you may want to consider that, um, but whatever, it's nice of you, Mum. Uh, oh gosh, a, a cost of extension, It's that's a sort of 64, how uh, yeah, long a piece of string? I mean, depends on what you build, depends how big it is, depends what kind of standard, depends if it's single story, depends on what builder quote you get. Get four quotes from four different builders and always build it slightly bigger than you think you need because actually, it, it, it's relatively not that much more expensive to build slightly bigger. So you got, you know, say you're going to be able to something which is 200 square feet, 20 feet by 10, it's not that big. But but the difference between that and 300 square feet, you know, I mean, actually, in terms of once you build the foundations, you're digging them just slightly further apart, you use a tiny bit more wood, there's a bit more finish off inside, but in general, it's not that much. James Daniel Martin, hi James. With ABI and insuring your home, what level of rebuild your home will it be? To what extent will it rebuild to? So you, this is where you, you need, when you do an insurance thing, you need to be really honest about um, about the value of your house. And there's a difference between what the value is and how much it costs to rebuild it. I think there are, there are on some of the portals, um, you know, the right moves, the brand locations kind of places, there are indications of, of build, rebuild costs or the RICS, Royal Institute of Charter Surveyors has some help. Um, but you might need to get a little bit of a survey done or um, uh, somebody to look at the, the, the rough rebuild costs of, I mean, there's an average for, um, for a particular kind of house like a two bed terrace um, a, a three bed semi detached a detached house will have an app me an average build costs but it should be rebuilt to as good or better condition than it was um, before whatever incident happened that incurred the insurance yeah norfolk or spence next question norfolk or suffolk where would you rather live oh difficult question both beautiful i'd probably go for anywhere with the beach and both these places have gorgeous beaches don't they but some of the north norfolk beaches i understand are the best in the world didn't they film that scene from the piano which is supposed to be new zealand on the norfolk beach i forget what it's called but they they are you know, about an island where we're relatively easy access to beaches imagine living in the middle of america it's like it's like a 1500 mile drive to get to the nearest beach you're like wow so listen that is it for the first part of this week questions uh we'll be back with set part two in a few days time uh, but for now make sure you like this video make sure you hashtag um on the monday hashtag ask martin monday on my twitter which is at tv martin roberts and uh yeah have a good few days